myself dr lipsa butani from department of radiology pramukh swami medical college karamsad gujarat so my topic for paper presentation is mri evaluation of developmental delay in children so developmental delay is defined as substantial delay in one or more age appropriate developmental domains it has an estimated occurrence of 1 to 3% worldwide MRI is the greatest modality to investigate such patients. Evaluation of a child with developmental delay is important not only because it allows timely diagnosis and handling but also useful for parental counseling regarding the result of their child and to detect any possible risk of recurrence in the family members. The degree of developmental delay is further subcategorized as mild, moderate and severe. If the functional age is less than 33% below the chronological age, then it is called as mild. If the functional age is 34% to 66%, then it is called as moderate. And if the functional age is more than 66% of chronological age, then it is called as severe developmental delay. So my aim is to study the prevalence of normal and abnormal MRI findings in pediatric patients with developmental delay and further classify the abnormal MRI based on the findings and to establish the utility of MRI for the same. So inclusion criteria are pediatric patients with clinically diagnosed developmental delay below the 15 year of age had been referred to my department for brain MRI were included in this study. Materials and methods. This is retrospective analytic study of 54 children with developmental delay referred for MRI at the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Tertiary Care Hospital, Sri Krishna Hospital, Karamsad. Performed on Siemens Spectra 3 Tesla MRI scanner. Non-contrast MRI scan of brain was performed by obtaining 4 mm thick T1 weighted, T2 weighted, diffusion weighted and ADC as well as susceptibility weighted Im axial images, 5 mm thick flare and T2 coronal images and 4 mm thick T1 weighted sagittal images. Patients were sedated by trained anesthesiologists in required cases. MRI brain was done and results were categorized into different subgroups according to radiological findings. So there are five groups. First one is perinatal hypoxic insult. It is based on the clinical history and MRI abnormalities. This group includes hypoxic insult in the perinatal period in preterm or term gestational children. Second is structural brain abnormalities. Third is white matter or metabolic disease. Fourth is other findings and fifth is normal MRI. So in developmental delay, there are 9% cases are for, of ischemic insult, 11% cases are structural abnormality, 35% are white matter disease, 15% other findings and 30% are normal MRI. So this is the few images of the white matter abnormalities. First one is Krebs disease. It is lysosomal disorder in which there is periventricular T2 hyperintensity is noted in occipitoparietal region. Second one is metachromatic leukodystrophy in which symmetrical hyperintensity is noted in the frontal and periventricular white matter. Third one is Allard, acute leukoencephalopathy with restricted diffusion, in which area of restricted diffusions are seen in both grey and white matter. Now, fourth is the periventricular leukomalacia. So, there is irregular margins of body and trigon of lateral ventricle with ventriculomegaly, and there is also loss of periventricular white matter. Then, uh, cortical tubers are seen in tuberous sclerosis. Then there is an eye of tiger sign which is seen in PKAN, pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration, in which symmetrical hyperintensity is noted in globus pallidus. Now there is corpus callosum agenesis. There is racing car appearance is seen in this. Now, holoprosencephaly, there are three types of holoprosencephaly. First one is alobar, semilobar, and 
lobar in semi lobar there is incomplete forebrain division so this is the number of cases now white matter abnormalities so one case out of 19 case one case is of alert one for chronic teres one for pkn one for tuberous sclerosis one leg syndrome six cases are demyelination two for pvl hemosiderin dep deposits one and other leukodystrophies five now structural abnormalities in which i found that glyotic areas of bilateral parieto occipital lobe bilateral parieto occipital polymicrogyria smooth thinning of corpus callosum and bilateral colpocephaly one case then agenesis of corpus callosum one then prominent virtue robin space in both lentiform nucleus one semi lobar holoprosencephaly one cerebral atrophy one and asymmetrical thalamus one now other abnormalities like cerebral microhemorrhages ependymoma of fourth ventricle extra dural fluid collection in retro cerebellar region and there and there is early cerebral atrophy due to b12 deficiency now results out of all 54 pediatric patients with developmental delay 16 patients were found normal and 38 patient were found abnormal on mri finding so ratio of 30 70 Out of thirty-eight patients with abnormal MRI findings, nineteen patients were so white matter abnormality, which is most commonly seen. Five patients shows ischemic insult, six patients shows structural abnormalities, and eight patients shows other abnormalities. Out of nineteen patients with white matter abnormalities, eleven patient has history of ICU admissions. while out of 16 patient with normal mri only 6 patient has history of icu admission so patients with developmental delay shows wide range of mri brain findings from completely normal to abnormal large number of patients with abnormal mri brain shows predominantly white matter abnormalities non contrast mri scan of brain is very useful modality for the children with developmental delay However further sequential mri may be helpful to ascertain disease progression advanced like functional mri diffusion tensor imaging and mr spectroscopy provide more information for structurally normal brain of children with developmental delay so these are the my references thank you